Chicago is known for many things. It's amazing food, the cold weather, artists and filmmakers, but perhaps its greatest source of pride is the story of its architecture. What's good, YouTube? It's Louis Gusto. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna be talking about the oldest surviving buildings in downtown Chicago. Make sure to finesse that like button and subscribe for more Chicago travel and lifestyle. When discussing the grandeur of Chicago architecture, of course, you must begin with the iconic skyline, the Sears Tower, the John Hancock Center, and the Board of Trade Building. Taking a stroll downtown is any architecture lover's dream. You see so many styles, from Gothic Revival and Neoclassical to contemporary and mid-century modern. In late 2019, I directed a short film about Chicago school architecture, focusing on some of the oldest office buildings in the loop, mainly from the late 1880s and 90s. These buildings are important not just because of their age, but because they ushered in the era of Chicago as an architectural mecca. But are their buildings even older than that? Well, the answer is an emphatic yes which is why we're filming this. And visiting these buildings allows us to travel back in time to imagine what Chicago looked like both pre and post fire. These landmarks are direct links to the origins of Chicago's architectural greatness. So who designed them? Well, before Louis Sullivan, William LeBaron Jenny, and Daniel Burnham, there was Chicago's first licensed architect, John Mills Van Osdell. <laughs> John Mills Van Osdell was born in 1811 in Baltimore and as a youth worked as a carpenter. In 1836, he moved to New York and met politician William B. Ogden, who would soon move to Chicago and become the city's very first mayor. Ogden invited his friend to join him in Chicago and design his house. Van Osdell accepted, but returned to New York for a few years before coming back to Chicago for good in 1845 when he opened the city's very first architectural firm. Believe it or not, before Van Osdell opened up shop, most people saw no need for architects. Builders would just design their own buildings, often very poorly. He designed homes, offices, and government buildings. So obviously he had a huge impact on the look of the city. During the Great Fire of 1871, John Mills hurried over to the Palmer House to bury his blueprints under a mound of clay. He returned a few days later to find his plans intact and thus was able to design and rebuild his lost works. Since the Great Fire, other disasters befell Van Osdell's works mainly greed and a lack of reverence for Chicago's architectural heritage. Today, only a few Van Osdell design structures stand. Other architects soon joined him, though it would be a couple of decades before the Chicago School truly emerged. So now that we know about Chicago's very first architect, what did the architecture of that era look like? Well, to put it simply, Victorian, more specifically, Italianate. There were many different architects working in the same style, so not all Italianate architecture looks the same, but they do share some characteristics like flat roofs, symmetrical designs, and beautifully intricate cornices. These buildings are the oldest survivors here in the loop, and they were built during a time when this part of town was a wholesale district. Some of the original tenants include a tannery and leather dealer, iron and woodworking machinery manufacturer, and a corner saloon. They were built between 1872 and 75. At the time of its completion, the Washington Block was one of the tallest buildings in Chicago. Its foundation was a marvel of engineering and helped to advance the evolution of the skyscraper. This style of building was only popular for a short amount of time because advancements in engineering allowed for bigger steel frame buildings to be built in the loop. Keep in mind that land values in this neighborhood were soaring, so the higher you could build, the more money you could make. It is a rare survivor from its era, thanks in part to the l tracks built right here on Wells Street. It was in pretty bad shape for a number of years due to ownership who actively disfigured the building. But thankfully, it has been restored to its original appearance and has been made a Chicago landmark. The Page Brothers building near the Chicago Theater has one of only two remaining cast iron facades in the city. Before the Great Fire of 1871, this neighborhood was full of buildings with cast iron facades. When this building was constructed in 1872, Lake Street was the city's main Main retail district and not State Street. This changed though at the turn of the century and in 1902 the western facade was upgraded. On Wabash alongside the L tracks you'll find even more examples of great architecture from Chicago's post-fire era. Some have undergone facadectomies while others have been saved and preserved with landmark designation. On Adams Street just off Wabash you can find a pair of Italianate buildings whose background remains a cryptic mystery. They were built sometime in the early 1870s and clearly have seen better days. The window trim, keystones, and roof cornices have all been lost, kind of like Chicago's version of the Great Sphinx. 
One block west, you'll discover the only other surviving edifice with a cast iron facade, the Palmer Building, constructed in 1872. The Delaware Building, originally known as the Bryant Block, is my personal favorite of the landmark post-fire era office buildings in the loop. As you can see, it's badly in need of some TLC. Hopefully the city could step in at some point soon to accelerate that process. It's notable for being a Chicago landmark and on the National Register of Historic Places. In 1874, when it was completed, it was only five stories. But in 89, two more floors were added. The buildings we've seen today represent an important era of Chicago's history. After the Great Fire of 1871 devastated the city and destroyed all of the buildings in the loop, there was a massive rebuilding effort, which became a major source of civic pride. These buildings allow us to time travel back to the past and imagine what Chicago looked like during the mid-1800s. Most of the post-fire buildings ultimately met with the wrecking ball, Understandably so, Chicago has grown by leaps and bounds over the years. However, in recent years, more of these precious landmarks have been demolished, and we must protect what remains. Many of the buildings we saw today are Chicago landmarks and are thus protected from demolition, but some aren't, and greedy developers are ready to demolish and destroy our culture and architectural heritage. It is imperative that we protect what remains of Chicago's architectural history. If you enjoyed this look at the post-fire era architecture of Chicago, the oldest buildings in downtown, go ahead and finesse that like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I would really appreciate it if you shared this video with your very best friend. Be sure to check out my Patreon page for exclusive community and bonus content. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time, but for now, I'm out of here. Peace.